What's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Kat. This is my channel and today I'm going to be answering the most asked question I get on any of my BSG content videos, which is what does it cost to have weight loss surgery? So there are quite a few things to take into account. So let's go ahead and jump into this. So the first thing you need to do if you are considering weight loss surgery is call your insurance company and see if they will cover it. For example, before I got married, I was on insurance through my company, my past, my old company, um, and that insurance did not cover weight loss surgery. So I would have had to have paid my program out of pocket, uh, but my husband's insurance did cover it. So we did have to pay our deductible, but after that, everything was covered at 100%. So understanding your insurance is gonna be the first step for understanding how much you're gonna have to pay out of pocket. You probably have some paperwork somewhere on everything that your insurance covers. Let's be honest, those things are never in English practically. <laughs> So the easiest thing to do is just call the phone number on the back of your insurance card and ask them, will this procedure by this doctor that I want to have done be covered by my insurance? If so, how much, what percentage will I owe after my deductible um, and all of those things. They will give you all of that information. So it's gonna vary literally by what insurance provider you have, what plan you have, all of those things. So I was lucky that Brett and I got married in time for me to have this surgery. So that worked out really well for us. Um, and then each doctor has a cost. So my surgeon has the cost clearly stated on their website. Um, the out of pocket, if you pay for the whole thing and insurance won't cover it, is $12,000. It's not cheap and that is for VSG. That's not for bypass, that's not for, what's the other one, RDL or something. There's a lot of weight loss surgeries you can have, um, but this is specifically what VSG cost. So also consider which surgery you're gonna have because the cost will vary by surgery most likely as well because some are more intense than others. VSG at my doctor's office, if you paid for all of it out of pocket, was $12,000. Since we had insurance that was gonna cover it, we had to pay our deductible. Our deductible was $6,000, and Brent never goes to the doctor's office. He hadn't paid a penny into his deductible, so I had to pay $6,000 out of pocket for my surgery. Now, there are a lot of things that go into that before you get to actual surgery costs. So the number one thing is, does your surgeon have a program fee? So that is a fee that the doctor's office collects just like as extra money on top. It's basically nickeling and diming you to take part in their program. Basically it's just another way for them to charge you money. But that was $250 to even meet with the doctor and sign up um, for the program was $250 for me. Now the bariatric center here in Kansas City is one of the best in the nation and what makes it really great is that you have to do all of these things for insurance to qualify. And a lot of these doctor's visits and tests and things are what's gonna help you get to your deductible. So the likelihood, if you have insurance that will cover it, um, the likelihood of you having to pay your out of pocket all at once is very slim. So when it got down to like actual bills I owed after surgery, I think it was somewhere in the 1500 mark, but we'll get to that. So. I had to pay $250 that did not count towards my deductible. Every time you meet with the doctor, you have a copay that counts towards your deductible. A lot of insurances require nutritionist visits. You have to do those for three to six months, depending on insurance. Some of them don't require them, but most of them do. Um, I don't think that mine did, but I had already done six months of nutritional visits with a nutritionist or dietitian um, before I decided to have the surgery to try to manage this on my own without doing weight loss surgery first. I highly recommend doing that, seeing if you can get a hold of it before doing something more drastic like surgery. But I met with my nutritionist, so that was crossed off. You have to do a sleep study. That was a couple hundred dollars. I had to do it three different times. I was only charged for one though. Um, the machine didn't work. There's a whole video on the sleep study. If you wanna see that, it was a nightmare, but 
They need to see if you have sleep apnea. If you do have sleep apnea, you have to be using a CPAP for a certain amount of time, usually before insurance will think it's safe for you to have the surgery. Um, so luckily I had a mild enough case of sleep apnea. My doctors determined it was not necessary for me to use the CPAP for an extended period of time to qualify for surgery. Um, but it was a cost to take that test. Um, I also had to meet with a physical therapist and a psychologist, and I did have to meet with a dietitian once. So each of those was like a regular doctor visit copay. Um, so I think on our insurance, that was $35. So, and then I had to meet with those people like once a month almost, depending. And they took my blood work every time I went in there to make sure my levels were okay. So the blood work was an additional cost as well. I believe that was $45. Did I mention physical therapist? I also had to see a physical therapist. Um, part of their work that they do is making sure that patients are active and safely active before, during, and after their surgery. So I met with a physical therapist once before my surgery. It was just kind of a baseline of where I was at physically, um, my flexibility, my movement ability, just seeing where my body was at, what it could handle, and those kinds of things at the weight that I was at. And then the most expensive pre-surgery qualification that I had to do was an upper GI scope. So essentially, they knock you out for like five minutes. And I did a whole video on this if you wanna see that as well. Um, but they take a little tiny camera, think of like a spy camera, on the end of a really long wire, and they stick it down your throat down into your tummy so that they can see what the inside of your stomach looks like um, to determine if you have um, any like ulcers or anything like that to make sure your stomach is healthy enough for this kind of surgery. They also take a biopsy. There's a specific bacteria that they're looking for so they run a test for that. If you do have this specific bacteria in your stomach, you have to be on medication for a certain amount of time before you can have the surgery. I think whatever that bacteria is um, hinders the healing process so they just want to make sure that your stomach is a healthy vessel for the surgery. So um, I'm kind of a weirdo. I almost like getting knocked out. It's like the best nap you'll ever have. <laughs> so, um, but be aware of that. Most insurances require this. Most doctors require that you have that. Um, so if you have not been knocked out before, there is a good chance you will have to be knocked out for your GI, upper GI. If you get an upper GI, they're gonna knock you out. Um, it was required in mine and my out of pocket was about $1,500. For that so I did that in July I started my whole process in May I had my surgery in September so four months it took me four months for the process a lot of people it takes a lot lot longer to have this process so keep that in mind a lot of people if you have to have the nutrition visits it's gonna add three to six months onto your timeline and that also means more bills, right? So every time you meet with that nutritionist, that's a copay you have to pay. And at the bariatric center of Kansas City, like every time you go, they practically take your blood work every single time. So it's a whole thing, <laughs> but every time you pay something, it counts towards your deductible. So I had a lot less um, out of pocket than I thought. I also, just as a side note, now that I'm thinking about it, I don't think I actually paid $6,000 for the surgery. I also have um, medical grade, like a neurologist injects Botox into my forehead, my neck, my back, and my shoulders um, for migraines. I can do a whole other video on that. I might have done a whole other video on that already. I'll have to check. But um, that costs like $1,500 right there, but I'm part of a savings program where when I get that done, I get reimbursed by the Botox company and they pay for it, but it still counts towards my deductible. So I probably only paid 4,500 for the surgery out of pocket. Yes, so I probably paid more like 4,000 to 4,500 out of pocket for this um, because I had other medical costs. Um, but basically, if you haven't paid into your deductible, you'll owe your deductible. The other thing you need to consider are post-surgery costs. So most doctors uh, require that you continue to follow up monthly through your first year. So depending on your doctor's plan, you will have 
post-surgery costs as well. They will want to check up with you regularly, do blood work, make sure that your vitamins are correct, you don't have any nutritional deficiencies. Um, you will probably want to continue your mental health journey, seeing a psychiatrist or a psychologist. I see both. Um, both I now see my personal doctors instead of the doctors through the bariatric center. Um, I had my own psychologist and psychiatrist prior to my surgery. Um, they required that I see theirs. I'm more comfortable with mine, so I don't see theirs anymore. I do think the mental health journey is just as important as the physical journey in this process. So please make sure that you are taking care of your mental health and making sure that is an aspect of your entire journey. And then you will, of course, have continued blood work, so that's an additional cost. Uh, but by the time you get done with the surgery, you will most likely have hit your deductible and the rest will just be co-pays. So when I get my blood work done or I go see, I got a bill for my psychiatrist because I saw him two weeks ago and it was $35, it's just a copay. So just know that after the surgery, there are continued medical costs, um, but as always, as you should always be doing, but especially when you have a major surgery, be, be sure to keep all of your medical receipts because if you have a certain percentage of them, based on your income, you can write them off on your taxes. Like I did last year. I wrote off my whole surgery on my taxes. Before I forget, I should also mention that some hospitals and some surgery centers do allow for payment plans. So when you go in for your first doctor's visit, I would ask if that's something you need. Um, a lot of them do provide that. Mine did not. I think that kind of sucks. I think that kind of limits uh, the people that can actually have the surgery, I think a lot more people would have it if it was more accessible. And I think a payment plan makes it extremely accessible. I probably would have done a payment plan um, if I could have because I lost my job in June and had my surgery in September and didn't secure a new job and my first paycheck didn't come until November. So luckily, I had enough money saved up. I knew this was what I wanted to do and I could continue through with it. But I know a lot of people have not been as lucky as I have. So keep that in mind. And if you have any additional questions, please drop them below or feel free to shoot me a DM on Instagram. I'm always here for you guys. Subscribe if you haven't already become a Warrior Crew member and I'll catch you in the next one. Love you guys. Bye.